everyone. So we all love Dr. Masaru Emoto and his gorgeous water crystal photos, right? And we all know that putting crystals in our water lifts the vibe, right? But what if our common understanding of these water phenomena are just a little bit off base? So I'm here today to burst some hippie myths around crystal and water. But first off, you guys, let me make an announcement because I am thrilled to share that I've actually been accepted to train at Dr. Masaru Emoto's Research Institute and become an instructor in his Hado methodology. So stoked. In April, I'm going to be flying out to Tokyo to study and train, and I've never been to Japan before, so I'm really excited. But I'll be honest, I actually had some reservations. It took me a while before I decided to apply for this because I have so much respect for Dr. Masaru Emoto and just infinite gratitude for the way that his work has spread into the world and created a massive worldwide awakening about the consciousness of water. But there's been a lot of scientific debate over the validity of his research methods. And there's also been an inconsistency in other labs' ability to reproduce his findings. So one reason is because for every sample of water he collected, he would take several hundred photographs under a dark field microscope, but he only chose to publish the most clearly defined, most well-formed crystals, which of course created a little bit of a misrepresentation on the sample, right? Because it's not like the entirety of water molecules suddenly form crystals as soon as you slap the word love on a stagnant bottle of water. Not by a long shot. So picture this, bulk water, which is the water that we're all accustomed to, that's found in lakes and streams and oceans and municipal tap supplies and in bottles. It's basically a sea of chaos. It has little or no molecular structure. But x-ray diffraction studies have shown that inside this bulk water is just a small percentage of molecules that are formed into liquid crystals. They're like little microscopic icebergs floating in a chaotic ocean of violent, disordered motion. Now, the inability of some researchers to reproduce Emoto's work and the number of photographs that were necessary for him to find highly structured crystals tells me that his lab was probably working with bulk stagnant water when they exposed it to words and music, etc. Now, this doesn't invalidate the legitimacy of water's awareness. Researchers might just be missing one step in the process. So Theodore Schwenk, one of my favorite researchers, proved that it's actually movement that opens up water's sensory awareness to be more sensitive to the environmental stimuli and to create structure that reflects those stimuli. And as Dr. Patrick Flanagan said, all flowing water, though it may appear to be uniform, is divided into extensive inner surfaces, flowing streams. Millions of vortexes form when water breaks past stones and sticks and other obstructions. And these vortex patterns act as powerful resonant structures, as well as energizers and electrifiers for water and for colloids. So in other words, water only becomes stagnant when she comes into the care of humans who label her as an object in their possession and then store her in bottles and tanks for later use. This is against nature and it causes the molecular structure of water to disintegrate, to become bulk, shifts the composition of water so that there are less crystallized clusters and more random chaos. And in labs, again, this is referred to as bulk water. So which kind of water would you rather drink? And which kind of water do you think would respond better to environmental stimuli, like the words that Emoto used in his experiments, where the water was actually stored in bottles and glasses? Well, as it turns out, again, the ability of water to sense and store and transmit information is directly proportional to the strength of the hydrogen bonds. In other words, water that's in a formation can store information. In fact, this whole movement as awareness property holds so true that I'm sorry, not sorry, but I gotta burst another new age water bubble here. You ready? Every woke woke knows that by putting crystals in your water, you're gonna give it better juju, right? Well, in 1974, Dr. Flanagan did some research into this property of epitaxy or transference. So this is where a solid or liquid that is highly ordered, like a crystal, will bring more order and structure to any random bulk 
liquid that it's in or near. So if you have a quartz in your water, the hexagonal silicone dioxide structure will lower the water's surface tension and will help it keep its structure via this epitaxy, this transference. But Dr. Flanagan showed that as soon as the water starts moving again, it's going to reform its structures, effectively erasing whatever vibration had been imbued by the crystal. He actually wrote, the crystal effect would persist as long as the water was not disturbed in a turbulent way. When crystal treated water was poured, it had to be done in a laminar fashion or a smooth fashion, right? So even just the process of swallowing water down your esophagus could cause the water to lose some of the information received from the crystal. So according to Flanagan, if you're gonna keep crystals in your water, then it's important to use the water carefully, drinking it slowly with minimal disturbance. So this is why I'm kind of wary of so-called crystal infused waters and gem elixirs and all these things that are for sale now because crystal energized water cannot be stored or shipped because of this ephemeral nature of this hydrogen bonds. So will putting the word love on your water bottle make an impact on its hotto or its frequency? Sure, but not enough to stay put in the water's memory if your dominant emotion when you drink it is anything other than love. If you're feeling exasperated and your water bottle says love, well, honey, the water molecules are gonna imprint when it flows down your esophagus a lot more strongly than it's gonna imprint while it's sitting still and stagnant in a bottle. So having crystals in your water will help it maintain its hydrogen bonds, but it's not going to strengthen those bonds to the point that they're stable enough to stay put. So for the bonds to be highly stable and well-connected, the water has to be exposed to radiant energy or contain highly charged nanocolloids or be continuously vortexed and in movement patterns for a while. So should you tape affirmations on your water bottles and fill it with crystals? Sure, why not? Knock yourself out, especially if it helps you to be more present and aware of the lucidity of water's consciousness. If it helps you to form a more personal relationship with the source of life, then go for it. But don't overestimate the effects that words and crystals are going to have. So if you want to learn more, you can check out my latest blog post over at waterislife.love to dive a little bit deeper, learn a little bit more. And if you love the work of Dr. Masaru Rimoto like I do, and you want to expand your water wisdom even further, here are some other researchers that I think you'll fall in love with as well, because I would love to see their discoveries spread with the same kind of tidal wave of enthusiasm that Dr. Rimoto's has. Victor Schauberger, for sure. Gilbert Ling, Dr. May Wan Ho, Dr. Albert San Giorgi, Dr. Rustin Roy, Theodore Schwang, Dr. Henry Kawanda, Dr. Gerald Pollack, Dr. Patrick Flanagan, Dr. Marcel Vogel, Dr. Mushik John, um, Dr. Philippa Wiggins, and so many more. So you can find the list over in the blog post on my website as well and enjoy those rabbit holes of fascination. Now, if you want to learn more and experience hands on how to make your own water into vibrant, living, healing water, and if you want to cultivate a deeper connection with the source of life through the merging of science and spirit, and I really hope that you'll join me at the sacred waters of Koh Phangan in Thailand for a six-day immersion into the depth of water's mysteries and experience just how good you can feel when you're fully hydrated on a cellular level. We're going to receive underwater bodywork sessions, do underwater contact improv dance, and learn how our aquatic bodies and the water universe are interconnected and get more empowered as water guardians and water activists because water needs us now more than ever. So early bird discounts are available now. It's super affordable. It's infinitely valuable, and I hope to see you there. www.waterislife.love slash retreat. I hope you've gotten some value out of this, and I hope you've learned something new. And if so, please share it. And if you want to stay in the loop about water, you can visit my website and subscribe to the newsletter or follow me on Instagram where I'm going to be posting travel updates as I wander left around and make my way to Japan. You can follow my whole water journey and learnings on there. I'm still learning new things every day about water. So it's at Jen is a Friend. And I want to keep bringing you valuable content. So please let me know what you would like to learn about water. What are your burning questions? I'll make a post just for you. I hope you have a blessed day and stay hydrated.